Hello and welcome everyone to the 7th episode of our weekly podcast India Colonize. I'm your host Umar Ha. In these troubling times, I hope all of you are doing well, staying at home and staying safe. And for those of you who are, please pray for those who are not. Uh in today's episode we are going to talk about John Nicholson, a man who was venerated and reviled so much that he was turned into being a saint and a godly figure. A complete divine figure around whom his followers used to roam around as long as he lived and a cult that developed around him which survived almost until the opening of the 21st century in 1857 a member of an indian cult killed himself when he heard that the man he worshiped as a god had departed his life the nikal saini's cult had first appeared in the 1840s they wore garments of the colors of faded leaves and followed nikal sain wherever he traveled in a remote part of what is now pakistan nikal sain was in fact an irish soldier called John Nicholson even more remarkably the cult lived on until 21st century John Nicholson responded to this adulation by having his followers whipped his family were hardly more likely to have approved of this cult as they were devout christians john himself was born in dublin 1822 to alexander and clara nicholson Alexander was a doctor in one of the city's hospital and while John was still a young boy he contracted a disease from one of his patients and died. Clara's wider family was in Lisburn and she headed north with her children as she looked for help from her relatives. One of them, her brother James, made a good fortune in India. He paid for John to attend the royal school and secured him the cadetship in Indian army. Over the next two decades in Asia, John Nicholson would not only earn the adulation of his religious followers but become a hero of the British Empire. Britain at this point was expanding its territory in India and in this time Nicholson was given a remote area on the Afghan border to run as a political. This meant that he was a policeman, a judge, tax collector and a diplomat all rolled into one still in his 20s he was expected to deal with the hill tribes who resented any interference with their ancient way of life but nicholson nicholson's very presence made a deep impression on those around him at 6 feet 2 and with a long black beard he was a tall imposing figure fierce and fearless on one occasion after the offer of a reward had failed to lead the capture of a notorious bandit nicholson saddled his horse and headed off to hunt him down he found him in his own village surrounded by family and supporters undeterred nicholson fought with him killed him and took his body back into the town he cut off his head and displayed it on his office desk as a warning to others when indian troops mutinied in 1857 nicholson led the british response in punjab but his methods of dealing with the civilians unsettled even some of his own contemporaries men would be paraded before him and he would use his own intuition to decide who were enemy soldiers in disguise and who were innocent who should die and who should live nor did he shrink from the enforcement of a perceived superiority of being a european he issued an order that no indian was to ride by any white man he was to dismount and pay his salam bending his body in an act of subservience but his effectiveness as a soldier cannot be doubted and when the time came to attack delhi which had been occupied by the rebels during the indians call for the first war of independence it was nicholson who was chosen to lead the assault after successfully entering the city he was shot and fatally wounded he was buried under a slab of plain granite in a cemetery that now bears his name in delhi 
By the time of his death, John Nicholson had become a hero to the British. His death was described as a national misfortune. His mother paid for a monument to be installed in Lisbon Cathedral. The artist John Henry was the man who had immortalized Daniel O'Connell in Dublin and Prince Albert in London Memorial. It can be seen on the wall of the cathedral even if you would visit it to this day. The statue of Nicholson in Lisbon Market was erected in 1922 on the centenary of his birth. But it was a divisive occasion. Those speaking of the Grand and Wheeling in the year the Irish got its freedom as a free state came into being used him as a symbol of the defense of empire, Ireland being just like India. As for the Nicholsonies, the cult lived on long after Nicholson's own death. Nikal Sain assumed the status of a Muslim saint. Stories were told of him dispensing rough justice on those who had terrorized the poor. According to the legend, he once mistakenly chopped off a man's head, but realizing his mistake stuck it back on him again. Remarkably, the last of Nikal Saini's died in 2004 in the Pakistani town of Abbottabad. The last link with the life of this remarkable Irishman, 150 years after his death. Even in his lifetime, Nicholson had his own critics. Sir John Lawrence, late Governor General and the Viceroy of India, found him difficult to work with and far too keen on confronting and humiliating Indian leaders. Others found his keenness for flogging Indians on almost any ground, sometimes even when he did not have the authority to do so, simply deeply disturbing. For Nicholson, as for all British officers in India, the supreme challenge came in the revolt of 1857, when a military mutiny among the sepoys of the East India Company led to a full-scale rebellion, which quickly spread across northern India. Nicholson seized the military opportunity with relish, leaping into action, openly expressing his contempt for any commander who did not measure up to his own demands for a speedy resolution. He was, of course, an enthusiast of flogging, torturing and executing captured rebels. Like many of the British that year, he was incandescent with rage against the Indians, partly because of the revelations of atrocities that had been committed against the British women and children who were murdered and their bodies mutilated. However, his vengeful hatred sprang also from the outrage that Indians should dare to challenge the British rule at all. He died of wounds received while leading the assault or lift siege on Delhi. Few Victorian imperial hero figures survived the scrutiny of the post-colonial age, but his lust for blood has made Nicholson particularly reviled. These soldier sahibs of the British India were men of remarkable energy and drive, firm believers in the benefit of the British rule and genuine in their desire to rescue India from what they saw as its backward and oppressive rulers. These attitudes no longer hold sway, of course, but no career encapsulates the deep chasm that separates modern attitudes towards colonialism from those of the Victorians quite as well as that of Nicholson, the living god, John Nicholson. Nicholson's life told in patriotic popular fiction and verse, including by Sir Henry Newbold and Rudyard Kipling, seems to modern eyes that these military upholders of the empire are problematic figures. The steely determination the Victorians so admired looks more like a cruel victimizing to modern eyes. The historian Charles Allen himself related to Nicholson tells of the difficult feelings that he experienced when he first realized that his illustrious forebear was being denounced as a sadistic bully a racist and a religious bigot. Nicholson's tough, uncompromising character was formed partly by his background in the north of Ireland and partly by his experiences as a prisoner of Britain's disastrous invasion and occupation of Afghanistan during the First Afghan War. Already quick-tempered, Nicholson emerged from this experience with a reputation. Even among the hard-earned East India Company officer corps, 
he was known for his unforgiving attitude towards indians when one indian leader spat on the ground in front of him nicholson correctly perceiving it as a serious insult had the man manhandled to the ground and forced him to lick his own spittle passing a mosque one day nicholson noticed an imam who engrossed with other things had not greeted him with the customary salam he hit the misfortune man and he got him brought him before him and with his own hands shaved his beard off a deep humiliation for a muslim as nicholson very well knew in one of the most famous tales told by him during 1857's india's uprising and mutiny nicholson personally ordered and oversaw the hanging without trial of a whole set of regimental cooks when poison was found in the soup they had been preparing for his fellow officers such stories were very well calculated to please the victorian public but they are far more problematic for people today where the victorian saw a manly character embodying the virtues of the british empire a modern audience is more likely to see him as a violent bully contemptuous indian life contemptuous to the indian life and dignity the personification of the worst aspects of colonialism it does not fall to many of us to be worshiped as living god but that was a fate of john nicholson a 19th century british army officer in the service of the east india company nicholson the subject of a new book covering his life and times served for much of his career on a disputed and perilous northwest frontier of india and it was there that his fearsome reputation led to the creation of a religious cult dedicated to the veneration of the great god nikal sen although his colleagues were understandably amused at the spectacle nicholson himself a stern victorian christian who read a chapter of bible every day took a dim view of this idolatry and set about his devotees with a whip this however merely strengthened their conviction that he was a god and the cult lingered on long after his death into the 21st century nicholson is forgotten today but at the time he was one of the most celebrated band of british officers in india like herbert edwards james abbot renal taylor the lawrence brothers whose adventures made them national heroes their deeds and death are recounted in memoirs and biographies statues memorials both in india and at home that brings us to the end of our today's episode i hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you did please like share and comment and subscribe to our channels on all the platforms or any platform that you are listening what keeps us motivated to bring more episodes to you is the fact that your support that you lent for us i hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please recommend it to your friends and others and please do share it on your social media platforms that would mean a lot of great help thank you so much